doing here? Uh, what we're doing is we're making prototypes for what could be constructed as a dome for an emergency shelter. So we're putting concrete and sandwiching it with carpet and some sort of reinforcing material. And we're making smaller triangle prototypes for what could be bigger triangles so we can put together in a larger dome. So you're having like different types of concrete? Yeah, we have 18 different combinations of different carpet, different reinforcing material, and different ways of putting the carpet in. Sounds nice. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. How did you think of this dome structure idea? When my wife and I travel around the world, we see a huge need for a relatively affordable shelter that can withstand earthquakes and typhoons or hurricanes. The dome lends itself to that, but the problem is that domes are expensive and hard to fabricate. So the idea is to use uh, concrete. Concrete technology is available planet-wide. In Guatemala and in parts of Southeast Asia, I've seen mom and pop uh, cement block factories mm -hmm. where you have people just making cement block in their backyard, very small scale operation. But it, it makes business sense on a family scale because it's really labor intensive. Yeah. But then also the materials are then local, so you don't have to transport cement block too far. The other issue is carpet, is that carpet could be recycled, but planet wide almost no carpet actually is recycled. Ironically, after we started this, I've been researching how carpet is used, and one of the things that people do with it is they grind it, shred it, and then mix that in with cement, and it makes the cement, even after it fails, it still kind of sticks together. Okay. So you end up with fibers. I've, I've poured concrete with fiber in it, but the fiber I got was bought brand new, made for that thing, fiber yeah. glass. But taking shredded carpet and mixing it with concrete, it's like, wow, great idea. So I was thinking about um, just what you could make out of laminate concrete carpet. And it struck me the easiest thing to do would be to make some type of geodesic structure. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of refugee camps, you end up with debris. And the debris doesn't work well because then after the refugee situation, you end up with just trash. Yeah. So if you make uh, ferro-cement structures, uh, get the people in country making triangles and rectangles and squares and other shapes, my hypothesis is they pretty quickly will evolve into making water storage containers, rodent-proof food storage containers, composting toilets, and, and a host of other stuff. And once the technology is developed uh, to the point where you can even show small application, my hypothesis is that this will go global fairly quickly. Like how like marketable you think it is? Like marketable, i.e., are you are you whoever does this going to make a lot of money with it? Probably, right. probably not. But if you franchise it and work with engineers without borders, my hypothesis is that, that, that on a mom and pop scale, decentralized in third world countries this could become highly, yeah. highly used. And, and to me, that's uh, certainly greater good. I know that the project staff member who's been working with you guys on this project, he wants to talk to Engineers Without Borders. Hernan Professor Hernandez was really interested. Find them to, so that they actually close on the top. Because you have to be, the thing with a, with a dome structure is that it is unstable until it's, it's closed. So you can't, build it partially and just let it sit there. You have to kind of hold it until it's all together, then you, then you let it 